Hey y'all, and thanks for checking out this video. I had a, some requests and I wanted to kick off a series of videos on gardening best practices. It's a pretty broad topic with a lot of angles and I think it's best attacked over a few shorter videos. So my ultimate intent, intent is to cover energy gear, seeds, farming for seeds, and energy gear, tips, tricks, and a few ancillary topics. But in thinking about it, it occurred to me that the actual fundamental foundation boils down to organization. I've seen far too many players with houses packed with game detritus, you know, 27 copies of the same pet body, 30 or 40 of the same common items that are, um, you know, available in the bazaar all day long. And who knows what else? So their houses are so stuffed with junk that they have no place left to garden. But I want to be clear, I'm not referring to houses that are decorated. If you decorate and want plants as part of your decor, I'm not here to dissuade you. Um, nor am I implying that my way is the only way and that this way is the best way. It's a way. And... You can take any pieces, parts of it that you want and apply it anywhere you want. And I hope you do that. I hope you take that away from this. Uh, but I'm not suggesting that, uh, that you do it specifically this way. So let's talk about organization. I think organization is going to help you across the board. It's certainly going to help you with gardening, with your questing, and if you're farming for specific gear, um, or if you're crafting. So invariably, with any of these things, you're sort of back and forth to a central point, a house. So let's say in this instance, you have your red barn farm equipped as your home house. Anytime you hit the home button, you go to your red barn farm. Um, if you're growing a, anything in there, any seeds, like let's say you have a 69 plot bed of couch potatoes, and every time you port into your house, you run the risk of needs creep, we'll call it that. So pests appear and, you know, it's usually one or two or five. It, it, it takes a lot of energy and really fundamentally, if you're gardening, you want to stay out of those houses. Um, you know, you only want to visit the houses every 12 to 24 hours to service needs and or harvest. And what this is going to allow you to do is to, to minimize your houses, minimize your junk, or at least keep track of it and, you know, facilitate better organization across the board so that you can do many of these key elements of the game with ease. So we're going to use your dorm as a central hub and it's going to act as a transportation hub for porting back and forth to Wizard City. It's going to act as a crafting hub in this instance and a place to keep a few choice items. So what we're going to cover is how to build a soil ladder in your dorm room, how to install an attic, how to place and use the backpack butler if you don't know about it. Um, it's a key piece of hardware in the game. Everybody should have one. And this will show you where to stick it and how to use it. And optionally is uh, hanging multiple tapestries in the dorm room. There's only so much wall space in there. And if you've got multiple tapestries, I'll show you how to hang those to use those as part of the transportation hub. Now, if you don't have tapestries, you don't have to do this part. Um, it's certainly optional. Also, I will say this about tapestries. If you don't have tapestries, and you intend to craft them, let me save you a little heartache. Uh, in all honesty, there's only about three or four useful tapestries in the game. I find that once you've left a world, you typically aren't porting back there, at least not enough times to justify a tapestry. Now, if you have um, jewel plants that drop tapestries and you have all the tapestries you need, um, you know, by all means, use whatever works for you. But, you know, literally, once you finish Dragon Spire, you're probably not going to be porting back there enough to justify crafting a, a tapestry, unless you want to do it. 
whatever you want to do, whatever works for you, um, go in that direction. So once we're done, our dorm, it's going to look like this. It's going to be nice and sparkly and clean and organized. Your mother's going to be proud, trust me. So in order to achieve this, we're going to need a few items. The small blue trim rug. Um, Albert Quickhammer, he's the furniture shopkeeper in Wizard City. And while you're there, pick up a backpack butler. It's the best 2,500 gold that you will spend in the game. It's also Albert Quickhammer. So this is optional as well. This is the crafting portion of it. Um, head to Crocotopia and see Eric, Eric, however, whatever, Mander guy who is over by the Croco Sphinx. Pick up a basic crafting station, a card crafting station, a housing crafting station, and an equipment crafting station. And if you want a jewel crafting sta station, you can get one in the bazaar. And I think they're sold in Dragonspire. I could be wrong about that. But um, if you want it, go ahead and pick up that fifth crafting station. And your crafting needs are covered. And they will be right there at your fingertips. Um... I made the mistake early on of burying all my crafting stations in the middle of a decorated house and invariably felt like it was a, a proverbial trek to get to those, you know, to do the crafting whenever I was doing any crafting. So this puts it all handily in one central point. So you're going to need four flatwood platforms as well. You want to buy these in the crown shop. Go ahead and select the gold option. So type in platform, highlight platform, click gold and buy four of them for $17.50 each. Uh, don't spend crowns on them unnecessarily. So the transportation hub piece, um, it's going to look like this. And you're going to need uh, one of two things to pull that off. The first option is the wall LG castle block. Um, it's available from Lloyd Fallingwater, who's also there in the Wizard City Shopping District on your way to see Albert Quickhammer. So it is crafted. Uh, the recipe is 10,000, and you can see what's required to do it. It's, it's, it's a pretty simple crafting job. The alternative to that is the large wooden wall block. You can get that from Roland Silverheart in the arena for 12 arena tickets. That's also an option. So now I'm going to show you a video that details this out. I'll do some commentary um, throughout. But essentially, you know, once you started the game, your very first character, the dorm was your home. Um, whichever side you were on, the boy or girl side, and sorry, I don't design the politics for the game. But to start off, you're going to need um, your blue trim rug. And I want to set it. I want to highlight it and pull the sensitivity down and switch between relative and absolute. Then you're going to want to scoot the rug into the corner. This corner is my preferred corner. I think you can use any corner, but I feel like this works the best. Then you're going to want to just soil test it. Just run the small soil spell over it to make sure it sticks out of the wall sufficiently. And then you're going to want to highlight that blue trim rug and you're going to want to move it up four clicks accept it and then you're going to cast a small soil spell on it now this is the soil ladder as an alternative you can also use a teleporter but why waste a teleporter on this so you're going to install eight of these with a four click interval and then i'll show you the next piece once we get to it
I think I should mention that you want to start your dorm off with nothing in it. Um, if it's a new dorm, just take everything and pick it up that's in there and uh, junk it in the bazaar. Okay, now we want to use the flat wood platforms. We want to spin them and get them to where they'll set down. So the relative and absolute piece, um, you want to leave that set to the X, Y, Z, but you may need to adjust the sensitivity throughout, depending upon how well they line up. And you sort of want to take and use that last soil bed as your guide, the top soil bed. So you want to bring the flatwood platform up to where it almost appears that that final soil sets on top of it. And you'll see as this goes through that there are occasions where the sensitivity needs to be adjusted. These don't have to be like 100% dialed in perfect. They can be a little bit uneven. Um, and you can certainly flip these around and try it any other way. They don't have to be in this specific configuration. But as you'll see in a moment, you will need to leave a little separation, um, an escape hatch, if you will, so that you can come down out of the attic um, once you go up. And you'll see in a moment. I like to run this uh, first one, um, as you can see here, where you close it off on the right hand side so that there's no blue showing. And once you get your first one installed, move on to the second one. And once you get all four of them up there, you can sort of play around with their configuration. Additionally, once you do a bunch of major moves or steps, before you switch direction, you may want to click accept because sometimes um, things have a tendency to sort of float to a different location. So that's why you'll see a lot of stops and starts and accepts and redos. It's a fairly delicate thing, but it, it's not difficult to do. And you'll you'll see if you try to do this, you'll you'll see where it actually floats around a bit and sort of screws up your <clears throat> your intent or your method and the movements.
that three click gap there is essentially a drop down so that you can get out of the attic once you're up in it. Okay, now you got a finished and complete attic, and this is how you get up to it. You put a few things up here, and this is how you get out of it. You're going to drop down through that little gap we left. No need to waste a couple of teleporters. So now we're going to install this, the tapestries. We're going to use the large wood wall block for that. And this is going to be essentially the same count. It's a four count relative absolute sensitivity at the bottom. It could sometimes be a tad bit tricky, but you're going to want four spaces between each tapestry. So I like to put the bizarre tapestry first. Then you're going to click and highlight it and move it over four clicks. And if you run into an issue like this where you're clicking but it's not adhering, just move your character a little bit. And that should take care of this issue. Now you can start installing other things. I like to keep a gear vault in here, but I like to spin it around and use the relative absolute to move it under the tapestries. That way it's sort of out of the way and somewhat recessed into the wall. For whatever reason, that little box with the hat on it is something that you can't walk over. So this gets it out of the way and you know, you're certainly able to click it and open it, use it, no matter where it is.
Okay, so your backpack butler, you want to put him right by the front door. So essentially, you're going to unequip your houses, so no house will be equipped. Only, so that means when you click home, you port to the dorm, and when you immediately port, you port in where that front door is, or if you come in through that door. The second that you port in, your backpack butler is there, and that dialog box for the backpack butler will pop up. And I'll show you that in just a minute. This is the part where you can hang whatever sort of things that you feel like you need to keep in here that are handy. Um, whatever junk you want to have in here, so to speak. You want to go ahead and install that stuff first. Um, you can also expand the dorm room with a bric-a-brac -brac, bric um, potion. So if you need more space in the dorm, that's an option. So this is the other thing I like to put in is the seed bank. And I like to use up that wall first, you know, put the items on the wall before I float the seed bank in. And I like to put it in between my bank and backpack butler. So it's essentially right there if I need to, uh, to access it. Okay, so now we're going to install teleporters to the Red Barn Farm. And as you can see, this selects the destination. So whatever color you choose to use, you want to make sure that uh, that you've got the right one. So you're going to put down this arrow wherever you want it. And you can do multiple teleporters. I'll show you in just a moment. Then you want to equip your Red Barn Farm. Port to your Red Barn Farm. And install that teleporter with the little green triangle on it. That, that is now source. And it will port you back to your, your dorm room as destination. I like to pair teleporters. So I'm going to put another destination here at underneath that teleporter. And then teleport back to the dorm. And then go ahead and install the source teleporter here. So now I've got a paired group of teleporters or pair of teleporters. And you can teleport back and forth. So you're going to unequip your Red Barn Farm, so no houses are equipped. Um, let's go to the Bazaar. So we come in, do our business, and then we click Home. And voila, and there's the Backpack Butler right there. We hit X. And we can search anything, any item that we currently have in any house, in any location. And I'll show you a little bit more of that. I have another example that features uh, two separate houses, two teleporters. So this is the final piece of it. Um, I like to put all the crafting stations up here. And also with these, feel free to use the relative absolute to, to move them around if they won't go specifically where you want.
And just to demonstrate, as long as you have the soil ladder and the attic installed, you can add, subtract, reconfigure this anything that's in the bottom part of your dorm whenever you want. And as a part of organization, we're putting things back where they go or where we would typically store them. Okay, this is an alt character on the same account. So as you can see, there's two teleporters. It's two separate houses. This is the crafting attic. And you can also stash a few things up here if you want. Pets and mounts and whatnot. Um, they do tend to fall out of the ceiling, but you know, the minute that you um, click a button or whatever they go back to their original position so this is a port into the red barn farm so there is there are some plants in here and we'll just run through both houses so that you can see So remember what I was talking about item count. So see, there's 354 items in here. That's uh, soil plots as well as plants. So if you minimize the junk, you can pack a lot more in. some future growing space. And some evil magma bees. And if you click home, there's your backpack butler again, and you can do a search. So, you can really expand this out. Um, you can even put signs if you've got a bunch of houses and you can't remember which one's which. Um, so you can certainly add additional stuff to it. As you can see here, there's a jewel vault and there's a kiosk. So, you know, use your imagination on it. But either way, this is going to help you organize and you know, better track the stuff that you have, especially if you're uh, gardening or questing across multiple characters. This allows you to keep track of um, what's on each character, especially with that backpack butler. So with that, I'll close this out. Um, thanks for checking us out. Throw a like, subscribe, and we appreciate it and enjoy.